So, you want to use SteamOS as your desktop OS. That's awesome. I do too. But, it's extremely important to note that Valve does not recommend using SteamOS as a replacement for your desktop operating system at all. In fact, they specifically tell you that in their FAQ. That being said, if you're anything like me and you want to use it as your desktop OS anyways, feel free to follow along because it's actually pretty easy. So assuming you've already installed and logged into SteamOS, you'll want to go up to the top right and select little gear there, that's the settings menu. Once you're in the settings menu, you'll scroll down to the interface selection on the first column, and then you'll just tick the checkbox that says enable access to the Linux desktop. Of course, you'll get a warning that says enabling desktop mode lets you take full control of your machine and change its system behavior in unsupported ways. If you're following this guide, you should already know that. So you'll hit yes, and then you'll go back to the main screen, where you'll then select little power button icon, and you'll see now you have an option to switch to desktop mode. We'll select that, and now you're in desktop mode. So what SteamOS has actually done here is there is a separate user called desktop and the user's desktop session is set to GNOME Shell. But just because now we're on the desktop does not mean we have a fully fledged, fully functioning desktop OS. What we need to do now is add the official Debian repositories. Now it's extremely important that we maintain the existing Steam OS repositories because there's software in there that Valve has customized and we don't want to accidentally overwrite that. So a common bug in Steam OS Brewmaster is that you may not be able to access the GNOME terminal. The reason for that is the localization settings didn't get set correctly during install. This is a known issue in Valve's work on it, but we still need to fix it. So you'll want to open an Xterm session by first hitting Alt F2 and then typing X-T-E-R-M. After you hit enter, the Xterm window will pop up, and the very first thing we're going to do with this window is we'll need to set a password for a desktop user. By default, the desktop user has no password. So to set the password, we'll type in P-A-S-S-W-D, and then you'll enter your new password twice. And once your password has been saved, we'll type in sudo space local ectl space set dash locale space in all caps lang equals quote en underscore us dot utf dash eight. Then you'll enter your password once more. And once that's saved successfully, you'll need to restart your computer. So go ahead and reboot and then return to desktop mode. Now that we've fixed the terminal issue and you've restarted your computer, let's go ahead and open the GNOME terminal. And once you're in the terminal, we're gonna go ahead and install gedit, which is a text editor. Now you don't have to install gedit if you like using Nano or you like using Kwrite or Sublime or something, you can go ahead and install that, but we're gonna go ahead and install gedit in this video. And once you have gedit, we're gonna use gedit to edit the apt sources so we can add the Debian repositories. So go ahead and type in sudo gedit slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list. Once gedit pops up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the entries for the CD-ROM because those are no longer needed and in their place we're gonna go ahead and add the Debian repositories. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the repositories that I used in the description of this video but keep in mind these repositories may not be the best for you especially if you don't live in the United States. So once we've added the repositories go ahead and save this file and then we'll do sudo apt-get update and that's really all there is to it. At this point you can choose to upgrade your system, dig into the repositories and find some software that you like like for example install Google Chrome or anything else really but that's pretty much all there is to do.